Hi everyone, welcome back to the studio. On today's brush ups, I'm gonna show you how to use just pure acrylics and water, just like this, to paint this rose here in a pretty quick time so we can practice some of our pure acrylic painting techniques. Let's get going. Okay, welcome back. Let's get going in here too. Now, the first thing is um, the uh, palette that I have. This is the normal palette that I use here on YouTube. So I'm just gonna list the colors today over in the video description. A lot of you, any kind of information you're looking for is in the video description where you can download the value scales that I use, all of the tonal scales. It's all there, all the links for everything, the paint, brushes, everything is in the video description down below, okay? Or so you'll find that and you'll find a list of the palette colors. So we need to take that time. So this is my board here, the background that I have on it. I take a color that uh, Heritage makes, it's a, it's a medium uh, beige color, and then I add a little bit of a, a light gray to the color, which you can just make from black and white or anything, just to lighten it up. And value-wise, if I look at this with my value scale, I think it's right around a six. I like to hold the value scale slightly at an angle, and you look, it's about the value six. It's a little bit darker than the seven, right between a six and a seven. Definitely lighter than the five, and definitely darker than the uh, the eight. So. It's somewhere between, right in here, right in between the six and the seven. That's a good color to work with. Now, the rose, okay? So the rose that we talk about, this is a color, this is a photo that I got off of uh, uh, Adobe Stock. For those of you that are in our memberships program on the thing, I'll put, a, I'll put this photo and the final photo of my painting right in the community page. Make sure you go over to the community page, check that out, and you'll see that where you can download it and use it for some of your painting, okay? All right, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this acrylic, okay? So I know I've been showing you a lot of olive prima and stuff. I'm going to show you today a little bit more acrylic where we're just going to use water and our colors here, and we're going to paint the tones. We're going to concentrate on what we call the half tone. So this is brush ups where we're practicing this. You can also go back into all the videos. I have a lot of videos, probably 40 videos that I did last year and uh, into 2020. Uh, that, that talk quite a bit about the half tone technique. That's what you want to look at is the half tones, what I'm going to use. And I use that a lot of times with acrylic. I'm not a blender, I'm a tone painter. So first, let's just create a little interest into the background. I'll take a paper towel here and I'll take some water, okay? And I want kind of that, that greenish and burnt sienna background that I really enjoy here. We'll just, we'll push a little bit of this into the background, just water. Now, when you're using a really high uh, grade of quality of acrylic here, like this one does, it has a little bit already of the what we call the glycol or the, the extender medium into the paint. And what this does is this gives a longer uh, working time to it. And so even if the, this dries, I can still come through and manipulate. Now I'm just gonna wipe up some of this extra with this right here and now, and just pull right through. And you see it doesn't pull holes. It doesn't do anything because this is a, this is an artist's acrylic. This isn't a crafter's acrylic that has a lot of vinyl in it. So you can do a lot of manipulation of the background and stuff. I think I'll just pull that through. So I'll, I use a lot of different uh, types of coloring and stuff. That got just a little bit green. I wanna have a, a bit of this burnt sienna in it. So see, I can come back right away. This acrylic is made to do this kind of stuff. Here. So I can come back right away and uh, push some of this color in. Let's push in a little more of the burnt sienna this way. So you can layer and do all different kinds of fun things right into this area here. Now, sometimes what I'll do is I will take the edge of my paper towel and I use this to wipe back through right here and, and kind of set the position what I want that row. So I'm gonna do this row, so let's set it up in a position. Let's just set it here as to reference it, it at this angle. Move this over a little bit. I just know I'm gonna get into that paint today. But uh, so we'll drop that back down here. 
draw that. See, I can, now your rose is almost a circle, right? Your rose is almost a circle. This will be about the size of it here. I can change it a bit because I'm an artist. I can do that stuff, right? We can do this. And this is just good practice. Now, right here, it's starting to get just a little dry and I want to dry out a little bit and it's not pulling it out. That's where you can just take a couple drops of water here. Just put it in your paper towel and just pull through, see? And the water will take that up. Water, for a good high-grade acrylic, water is your solvent. So I can use that to pull out and do all kinds of fun stuff. So that's a good size of the rose. I might make it just a little bit bigger, but that, that gets me going here. Now, I also like to start out, there's a couple of brushes that you can start out with. Okay, let's not use the round brush. That's for my birds and stuff. Let's look at this, okay? So normally I follow a great all prima painter, John Singer Sargent. You heard me reference him a lot. Using as large a brush as possible. Uh, and I usually like, when I when I do a lot of stuff, I like the flats. The filberts, the small filberts though, for you beginners, the filbert is a much easier brush. It draws easier, it's easier to get up onto the corner and draw. So uh, in a lot of my beginning lessons and stuff that I use, I have my beginners use filberts as opposed to the flats. They're easier to learn how to master. And I use filberts, uh, just solely used filberts for like 15 years. I didn't go into the flats. And uh, the flats, I just it's just different, okay? It's just different. But the, for the beginner, that rounded edge is easy to get up onto that corner and uh, draw with it. So, you know, you can, you can have either one. I'll use this filbert a little bit later. I'll start with this one. And I'm just going to add a little more color right underneath where I want this uh, rose to go, a little more contrast. And you'll notice as I put this on, it's called simultaneous contrast. As I put this on, this color starts to look lighter. And it's not lighter, I'm gonna add a little bit of water here. It's not lighter, it's just what we call simultaneous contrast. The dark color will make the light color look uh, lighter, okay? And so, that's one thing that if you're an acrylic painter, you need to remember that simultaneous contrast. And I teach a lot of that. So I'm just going to whisper some of this down through here. I like some of that, uh, that uh, uh, burnt sienna in there. Let's use the edge of our brush here. And let's just draw on that nice, um, that nice uh, stem here, a little bit of pine green and the burnt sienna. Okay, a little bit of movement here. We might put some other stuff out here and stuff later on, but that's good to start out with. Now, I'm gonna rinse that color out of my brush here with water since we are using water today, okay? As a matter of fact, you might wanna just add a few drops of water up here onto your palette so it's easy to grab to sometimes because my palette's at a slight angle. That might run here a bit. Yep, it's going to, but that's okay. We'll use, we'll just need a few drops of it here to, um, to dampen our brush as we go. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is look through the value. Now you can get the value scales again in the video links, in the description. There's links to, to where to go download the value scale. This is one showing a cooler red and, a, uh, and, excuse me, a cooler red and a warmer red. And when you look at this with the flower, you'll see the warmer red here, the values of the warmer red. Matter of fact, that back petal right back there, that one is like a nine and then you can see the value eights and sevens coming through here to the sixes down there in the center sixes fives as you get over to this side though you see the cooler colors see so you can see those cooler colors get that glare off of there for you you see those cooler colors getting down there into the fours threes twos up onto this side okay now when you're looking at the palette that i have here the naphthol red light will make the warmer colors here and maybe sometimes a touch of this so in this part of the rose we'll be using a lot of this color in the middle here we'll be using this color plus a little bit of quinacridone right here and as we get into our darker shadows cooler colors we'll use the quinacridone and we'll use the red violet so if i take this out here and i add white i get a nice warmer red that you see here okay you see this nice warmer red right down in there. That's the colors you see in there, okay? And then as I cool this, if I add a little bit of quinacridone to this and cool this color right in here like this, you'll see the cooler colors that are here on this side. So we have the warmer colors and the cooler colors. So the warmer colors and the cooler colors. So 
I am just, I'm not going to worry about getting the value perfect. We do know, starting out here, starting out down here, that these are down here in their three and four, you know, sometimes two and one, but a three or a four. So I'll start out down over here, some quinacridone here. Let's even add just a touch of that red violet, just very little white. Get that color down here to a three or so. And let's push some of that right down over here into this side of the rose. And we'll just take our finger and push this out. Now, when I push out like this, now watch what happened. I push this out like this. See that right there? That's called the shearing of the paint. Not all acrylics do this. Some acrylics will just roll up and, and, and become a mess. So you should, you know, it all depends on whether you can do some of these techniques. Depends on your acrylic, okay? Now, if I want to, um, if I want to thin that out even more, because it dries real quick, you can only shear the color while it is wet. Uh, and, but if it dries, it starts, because everything's drying here, and we have the heater on. It's cold out, we have a heater on in here. It's making the air real dry. And so I adjust my techniques just a little bit by that. I'm a pure acrylic painter, I love them. And acrylics don't need to be wet to get beautiful looks to it, to make it look like oils. They don't need to be, okay? Um, and you just have to adjust some of your techniques. So here what I'll do is I'll increase, and, and this is what this is, is meant to do. I'll put a little bit of water here onto the side of that. And see, I can push right through and soften that whole side out here. Now I'm gonna push for a little bit of movement, color movement and softness here, like this, and take that hard edge right away, just like that. That's what this acrylic is made to do. You could also do that with the brush, just brush through. So if I add the water into it like this, just, you know, you can do this for about an hour and a half, two hours with the, with the heritage. You can soft and blend them out like that, just using water like this. Now let's take some of that warmer color up here. We're going to go a little lighter into the value scale and warmer. Let's push that right up here. Maybe just a little bit more red. Let's push that up right up here to this side, right in here. Okay. Now, what you have here is a, a light to dark situation here. And so what I, what I create, so I created a dark color and I created a light color. And then to make something, to make it soft, I make what I call a half tone. Take a little bit of both, put it into your brush, and then come right between the two, right like that. And set that color in. Maybe over here I could add a little bit more of my violets over and over to this side, a little bit more of my red, white, and my light color here. Add a little bit of light to it, and I can soften that out. If you want this to become even softer yet, pinch wipe your brush like this, take out some of the extra color, grab a little bit of water. Okay, you can let some of the pink sit in there, that's okay. And just pull through. Blend it through with water. Water is your, when you're painting pure acrylic, water is your solvent and you can blend that through with water. Now, what makes all of this work really well is that half tone, is the half tone right in between here, okay? That is what gives you the ability. You see, when I was an oil painter, I was an oil painter for many years, and when I was an oil painter, we, we, we depended upon that oil staying wet so we could make the half tone. We take one color, put another color, and blend them in between to make that half tone. Well, the acrylics, we can do that if we start adding other mediums to it, like you know our extender medium, like open medium, some of the stuff I show you guys there. But if I don't do that, then I'm if I'm painting pure acrylic, I don't have time to sit there and blend and blend and blend and blend because it's going to go dry. So I, I physically make the half tone, push the half tone into there. Now, see, if I wanted to smooth this all out here, I would just come right over here. Now, this is almost dry. Let me show you. This is what Heritage is designed to do. So this is almost dry over here. I'll just add a little water to this and I'll reconstitute it. Now, you can do this for about two hours. And I'll just blend that into this a little bit more using the water. So I'm using the acrylic part of the paint. So you've seen me use the, or the, the extender part of the paint, the slow drying part. Now you see me use the acrylic. So now I have an idea. Now in this rose, I like that light petal here. I like these light petals in here, right in that area. 
and right in the center here is going to be where our you know uh, this is going to be a little bit darker now when you look at the rows let's go through it like a beginning lesson here remember what i say in all of my videos the rose has three parts it has the opening here's one you can see that nice i picked this rose because it has a nice beautiful opening it then the second part of it is that bowl you see that bowl right down here that's the next ring so you have one circle you have two circles and then the outer reaching petals these are the reaching petals these are the bowl petals these are the inside petals here so the reaching petals are going in towards the bowl so if we want to stay correct on this rose okay here let's let's set up those three areas here onto our rose let's take a little bit of quinacridone and maybe a little bit of red we're reading right in there it's about a value five or so so I'll add a little bit of light. Let's see that. Yeah, that's right about a value five or so right in there for that. So, and you can, if you cover like I did mine here, I just covered it with tape, you know, packing tape here. And I can look on there. It's going to be, if it's a tiny bit lighter, that means it'll dry down because acrylics dry about a value or so darker. So if you look at it and it's a six, that's right about a six. That's right about where six is. So if you look at it, six is going to dry down to there. Well, that's a good color to do that. Let's push that in, which is going to go right here into our, our center of our rose. Out to the outside of that is going to be a little bit of light. So I'm going to lighten up here. Just lighten that tone up a bit. Maybe when I lighten, I like to warm. So I add just a tiny bit. Let's add a little bit of warmth right here to that right there. Now, we don't really need to blend because we're going to have a center in that there. So then what I'll do is I'll just shear off a bit. Okay, so now I'm going to have the center of my rose, a back petal that's right there. Okay, and I can see it pretty clearly. Okay, I can see it pretty clearly. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of some of that extra color. I'm going to come over here towards my shadow. And I'm going to pick up a darker color, maybe a little bit of water into that just a bit. And we're going to come right down in here, leave room right down in there. Let's push that shadow of where that bowl is right down here. Let's push that in. That's the shadow of the, of the rose here. I'm going to push it a little darker right in here. So what I've done is I've divided my rose up into the three section. Now, I do this. I do this on stroke roses. I do this on a lot of roses. I divide it up into its three sections. So if, you, if you're a brand new beginner, there's a lot of videos that I have on the channel that talk to you about that are really, really, for really beginners. And they, I go through dividing it up into those three sections. You need to be able to start seeing that because those are the sections of the rose. And then I have on a playlist the 30 Days of Roses Challenge where you'll see me every day for 30 days paint a rose and practice that center where those and where those three parts of the rose are. So now this one is a turn towards us a little bit so it's a little bit more open. So that center is not sitting up towards the top, it's sitting right in here. So here is the center. Here's the bowl. So I'm putting the center right in here, okay? As a matter of fact, let me just put a, a little mark of some light color up like this. So now you can see that center a little bit easier. We'll go back and darken that a little later, but now you can see there's the center, okay? Here's the bowl right there, bottom of the bowl, and then our reaching petals out here. So I could go a little bit further out with some of these reaching petals. I could take these out a little bit further here. We'll just do that. So this will be basically the setup here for my rose. I've got a warm side and a cool side, my center where that's going to go, and then my bowl petals and stuff. And I already have, I already have some of the colors already in place. So now all I need to do is just answer a few questions. So like into this one here, I'll take a I'll come down here, we were saying that one right about a value five or so. So I'm going to have my light colors, my dark colors right here, okay. My light colors and my dark colors, let's set that over a bit. Let's set this here, organize myself just a bit. Try to stay out of that dark light, I bet you I hit it. 
And there, so we'll have our value five, which is a little bit of both our cool and our warm right down in here. Matter of fact, let's just take some of this and let's just using our small brush now. The small brush, if you're a beginner, I recommend the small brush because you can play around in here a little bit. We can push that color in and I can just push the soften the edge like that. When I push the soften the edge like that, that's called shearing of the color, okay? If I wanna blend that out, then I create something between this color and this color here a little bit lighter. I create a half tone, okay? And if I, so if I wanna blend it out and I push the half tone in there and that softens it even more, okay? So don't try to work it and work it and work it. If you're painting them with acrylics, don't sit there and try to work it, work it, work it, work it like that. You're not going to be able to. It's going to dry, especially on the different type of acrylic that you have. What you need to do is create that intermediate tone so that you can just lightly and see if I want to, if I wanted to soften. And I like that movement. That's a real soft movement. But if I wanted it softer, I would just create a little more light in my brush and it softens it out. It blends it out. So now you can see that warm to cool kind of tone going in there that you're modeling that all up with that warm and cool kind of tone going on in there, okay? Now, let's leave that light for a second and let's go in and paint this petal. This is where I use the little filbert. So what I wanna do is see this light little petal edge right here, that's what's drawing the petal. So what I'm gonna do is take my color, step right off over here and I'm gonna push that color right onto the corner of my little filbert like this, okay? And I'm gonna come right up there to the top part of my circle, and this is what's gonna draw that little rose right there, that rose petal, and I can come, I got a little fly in here. He's trying to get out of the cold again. And so I'll pull that right across there like that, that little edge. That's what's gonna draw that little petal edge right around like that. That's what I'm drawing right here. And I'll, I turn the brush over a little bit to the other side here, and I'll just pull that around. Now, I like to, it, when it's here, you don't see that much of a line of it right there. So what I tend to do is I'll just take the color in my brush and start to pull down into the throat of the rose, just like that. And I'll take that edge off just a bit. I don't need too much of that edge. And I start to draw where that little petal is gonna go. If you, and now I, I don't mind about any of that, but if you wanted to blend it out, take a little drop of your water here, come right between your light color and your dark color that's there, right into a half tone, right between, just pick up a little bit on your brush and just brush over that and that softens it out. See how that blends that out? That's the beauty of half tones. So if you're an acrylic painter, you're a tone painter, you're a half tone painter. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's come out here and let's go a little lighter. Let's pick up that edge. Let's go a little lighter and pick up that edge. And let's just softly come out here and maybe draw the edge of a lighter one there. Sometimes I just pull through like this because I like that kind of motion through it. Well, let's just after I apply it, I just pull through. Now I can do that later on with water as well because Heritage is made to do that. Let's add a little water to this, a little lighter color. Let's come out here and let's draw this extra little light petal that we see this little one guy right out here. We don't see that much of an edge, but we do see a lighter petal. So I'll put it on and then I'll pull through like this, pulling it through. Now, it, you know, if I make a mark like this, that doesn't bother me. I know I'm going to be covering it up. That doesn't bother me. But if it bothers you, okay, because a lot of people like their roses really blended, then you go make the half tone. So we're going to be right between, right up in this area. I'll put a little water in my brush. I'll work right up here, right up towards this half tone. Just take a little half tone and go right over it and soften it out. That's the beauty of the half tone. We can even soften that little bit right there out there and see it instantly blends out. So I don't always like to do that. I like my, my flowers to have a lot of movement in it. And so I don't always like doing that, but you can, okay? Sure. Now a little bit darker. So we'll go a value or so darker here. And let's pull this one right down in towards that bowl. Here's the bowl, okay? And let's just wiggle this around a bit 
put the bottom edge of this in, pull this in a bit right like there. Now, I want to soften that. Okay, I like some of this movement. Matter of fact, I probably like a little more violet in some of this as well. So I'll just touch a little bit of my violet colors here. If you need to, add a little bit of water. But don't make your colors really, really thin. You know, you can see here, I'm working with a lot of paint. Don't get them so thin that they, you don't have enough paint there, okay? Now, what I can do is I'll just take a little bit of water and some of my darker colors that are heading towards my bowl down there. So it's going to be right about in here, right? And then I'll lighten it slightly to a half tone that's between my petal and it, and I just put it right along the edge. And then I'll push slightly, and now I have that softened right into the edge there. Now I do like that little bit of light right there in that color. But when I'm building flowers, if I'm, I like to come through a couple times so I get a couple colors, I get some movement in and out. All the petals here always should start to flow into that, you know, into the inside there. And that's where I like, you know, my roses and stuff to go is to flow like that. Now, I will change my red sometimes. Maybe add, okay, that little guy, I tell you, he's, add a little bit of dark light yellow or a little yellow, changing that red up just a bit sometimes to get a slightly different color. And we want here, now we want to come in with a value that's right around maybe a seven or so. We look at that, you know, you can look at your, you can look at your photo and look at that. See, I see that's right about a seven right in there and it's maybe a little bit of yellow in it make it a bit different let's just draw it should be just ever so slightly darker than this one so we'll draw that and a little bit lighter than this one that last one we put in so we'll just put a little light over there draw that right around maybe point that out and pull that one right into there here comes this one pulling it down towards that bowl and I'll just shear that off. That's real close in there. I can just shear that and look at that. I hit that already. <laughs> I told you guys I was going to do that. You know, when I'm trying to keep it all under camera like this, it's a bit dangerous to the picture here, you know. <laughs> and so I should actually put out smaller drops of paint, but that's all right. So now I get that. So now when you look at this here, See, we're starting to capture this area of that rose. And I have them a little bit yellow there. So what I like to do is just come back a second time. And sometimes I'll do a little violet, but here's my value. I'll just mix up a, one that's a little bit more pink and just pull through and pull through at that angle there. And that just gives a, a little bit more interest and stuff to it. Now there's a touch of light on the edge. So I can pick up a bit of the light here and just touch a bit of the light, pull that down just to give more, more uh, light, dark interest to the flower there. And I like that. And we can actually in towards, if you look down in towards the rose there, it gets a little bit more red. So we can add a little bit more red. Now, those of you that have extender, you can also replace the water with extender and give you lots more working time. However, if you are practicing, and we're doing brush ups to practice stuff, right? This is a great little flower to practice your ability to paint those tones because that painting those tones is going to reduce your frustration, okay? That's the important part. So, you know, yeah, we can make it easier by using extender. That's why we make it. But we're here to practice. So, so see, I'll put a little red like that. And that's where I like. That's what I like that little bit of stuff you know other color going on there we'll just get a bit of that right up there like that i like that kind of movement and stuff into the flower petal okay now let's get uh, just a touch of light and the other thing that you can do is like these little caps that i use for my extender and i have big ones and small ones you can just reach over i have some dirty pink water here and just put a cap of that if you want to touch into something just put a cap of that on your palette and just touch into that because we're here to practice, right? We don't, there's, extender makes it easy, but you're an artist. You should be able to know how to do it without the extender and work the tone. So let's come in here. It's got to be a, a value or so darker than that. So we're looking like around a seven or so. Let's put a lighter pink right in there. 
which is the front of the rows. So here's the bowl. Let me re just redefine that bowl. Let's take a little dark here and redefine where that bowl is right there. Okay, so there's the bowl. There's that one right there. We can soften this right in here. Let's just take a little red right in between these two. We'll add just a touch of water to this and we'll just pull through and push. That's the shearing of the paint. And see how that gives that beautiful movement right through there? Just boom, happens so fast. Let's take a little bit of that right up around the center here as well. And just add a bit of that movement into that. See, I like that movement. So I don't always soften that out, I like it, okay? And now let's just take a little bit of light Let's just push a little bit of light and just touch down. Now, you can half tone if you, if you want to. I'm not going to, I'm gonna leave that maybe a bit more light on the cool side right there and just touch into that, get a bit more movement right in there like that, see? Okay, now let's, uh, there's a warmer. When I look at this, there's a warmer little bit right in there. So maybe I'll take just a touch of that warmer and just add a bit of that warmer color right in there. And I can pinch wipe my brush like this, okay? Put a little water and tap some of that major color out and just use water and just go through that right there and see how that kind of blends all together and softens out. So I get that nice warm color coming through there. I can get that too. Once you understand, you know, all the things acrylics can do, I mean, and they can do a lot, but you don't, you don't uh, have to use all of the extenders and stuff like that. You can use water, you know, if you have a good acrylic. That's the key, if you have a good acrylic. I'm going to put a little bit of that light there. I'll just tap my brush and just pull through and just soften that right in there. So water solvent. You know, there's a there's a video I made on um, on the channel with the what I call the water solvent technique, and that's what it is. You're using water as a solvent to push through and give you all this beautiful movement. Okay, we're acrylic painters. I mean, if think about it, if watercolorists can do this kind of stuff, we should be able to do it too. You know, we're not that much different. Now, there's a cooler pedal here, so we see this cooler pedal coming up right up and through here. And boy, I do like that glow, that yellow that that one doesn't have. But see that cooler petal that's right there. So let's take a bit of our water, some of our cool color, quinacridones, and that's right in about a value four or so. So not very much light to it, not very much white. Well, it's gonna go up and drop down. So it's gonna go up and drop down towards the bowl here and just pull down like that, okay? Now we've got a pull, here's our bowl. We'll pull down towards our bowl, pull down and turn your, so you're pulling down towards that bowl. So you get a little bit of movement of that pedal going that way. At the very bottom of it, down here, you see a little bit of the warmer color. So let's just put a little warmer color down here towards the bottom. Let's get a little more red into that. And add some water, don't fight it, add some water. Some acrylics though, guys, don't do this. Don't work like this. They're not made to work like this. The heritage is made to work like this, okay? Let's put that in. Oh, I like that movement in there. If you want it a little softer, just add a little more water and come right back through it again. And you can push right into that and soften that out a bit. That works out okay there, okay? And uh, maybe a little bit of the the violets and stuff right in here. So you can see I just work right around. Let's go over, let's come out here to a little cooler and a little bit violet. That one's gonna come out and then it's gonna come down this way a bit with some light. And I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna put on some heavy light color here. Now I gotta go to that shadow. So here's my light. My shadow's in here darker. I don't wanna go to the pure darkest of it, which is right here. I want to create the half tone from the light to this, and I'll push that right into that area there. Then I can soften it really easy if I have that half tone there like that. But I have to put in that half tone if I want that softness. Let's take a bit of this and just drop this down. This is a real pretty 
a bit to the flower here and some darker contrast right down into that heavy bowl right down there and I can soften it with a half tone but since I got so much paint on there I can push real fast here now if you're you know if you're a beginner you work slower and you play with it more that's okay uh, you still should try to paint this rose in an hour or so you know I mean and if you can do it in two hours you still have that working time of the acrylic like this okay after that it starts to dry up and gets harder and harder to work with and um, but you can see just with pure acrylic I can make it look just like it's an oil painted rose here you know it's 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 just in learning what you know we don't let me put it this way for years as a chemist I was trying to make acrylics act like oils and we did we added extenders and all different kinds of stuff and then I started realizing well wait a minute why don't we just paint like acrylics and use techniques that are for acrylics and we can look like oils if we do the techniques correctly and that's when I you know changed but I'll do both I can do both let's put a little more red in there push that out so I get that nice red violet to a little bit more of my medium red half tones right in there let's push some of this out there like that okay let's as we come out here to this to this rose here now we'll see these lighter colors out here mid value so I'll be right down here I'm going to take both of my violets and my reds add a little bit of white here to it okay just a bit and we'll start to draw some of these lighter petals out and around. So I like that little filbert. I just draw it right there. And when it's right in here, I can, you know, I like to push in and out a bit. So I like to push like this with the brush in and out a bit and create that movement. You can also create that half tone. You can also take a little softer red right in there as a half tone and push that in as well that's up to you that becomes a signature of, of how you're going to start to paint let's put a little bit of light right out here and catch that one catch a little bit more light not too light don't get too light out here this is the shadow side of the rose so don't get too light out there okay we have to keep that light out over here as a matter of fact let's just revisit our value uh, our lighter value warmer value over here let me just show you how you can do that so even though this is dry out here okay this is dry I'll come back out with my value eight or so or nine come right back out here add a little more lighter tip to that right there now how do I soften that I'm right here I'm just gonna reach right over here to the half tone and push that right in and soften that half tone. Then I can push a little bit, and all of a sudden that blends out. See, I'm going to push just a bit more light. I like the movement of it pulling in. See that little movement of it pulling in? That's what I look for here when I do those. And I'm going to push a little, like hit some of this rose edge. So I'm going to push that back out there like that. So that goes there. Okay. And uh, that's pretty good. There's some smaller little petals and stuff in here. I'm going to work this one out again, a little heavier. Work a little lighter petal right here. And see, after you have most of the lights and stuff set up, all you have to do is have that soft light like that, and you can start drawing petals, and they'll just, you know, you'll petal up your rows, you know, really easy. Uh, let's put just a touch right out there see I can put little sparks of it and uh, I'll thin this up a bit let's go just a little bit more color right out onto that one and I'll head this way towards its half tone to put in a half tone and just pull see I like that uh, what I do with my half tones what I really like is to skip a bit so I get a little bit of this skipping and then I push and then I get that interest into the petal that's what I really like we'll go a little bit warmer back up over here and right up over here some cooler right in between the two let's uh, put some of these beautiful petals right out here maybe one that comes out here a bit right out there some of that beautiful color it gets a little lighter 
down in here to base. So I'll lighten up my color right here. I'm looking, this is where I was. So I'm dropping down here, lightening up my color, and I'll just push some of that light right in there. Okay, we'll pop this right in here, pop that out there. Now, how do I soften down in there? How do I, how do I return to that nice little darker color that's right in there? I just head that way towards the half tone. Put a little bit of that into your brush and just drop a bit of that in there. If I want if I didn't want to push, if I want to soften that, I was here, I was here, I just take this and I take this, I create a half tone and I go right over it and I softened it right out, see? And I can soften out any of that movement there. And we can pick, I'm competing against the cold train outside. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Yeah, he's, I think that engineer loves his horn today. So we'll push that on. We can push on this other little pedal right here a little bit more. So I know I'm taking a, a little longer than what I wanted to do, but I wanted to show down, slow down and show you guys some of these beautiful halftone paintings you can do. Now we can uh, push, we can come down here. Let's push a little bit more of our light color in here. We'll capture the, I don't try to copy. I just try to capture the impressions of the, of that particular petal there. Maybe uh, a bit of it kind of, because it kind of comes out here at that angle right down there. So we'll just kind of capture the idea of it here. Push that around like that. Once you get your, your flower petals kind of set up, it's really easy to do stuff. But if you start looking like right here, you start to get a little light edge to that one there. And using that little filbert, you can draw a light edge really easy. Let's push right up in here, cool and warm, right up in here, and we'll go right up in this thing edge here, and we'll draw that little turned petal edge there. Now I'm gonna want it a little lighter here, and sometimes when I put light on, I'll pull a different direction, so it, it looks just a touch different here. But you can get, you can get, as you get more experienced, you can get very specific. Let's put this in as a little bit of red right in there, just like that. So see, now you get this little um, kind of very pretty lights. And as you get more uh, experienced with tones, you'll see there's a little bit of greenish tone in there and all that kind of stuff. It's a little bit too much for right now for, for uh, you know, doing a, a, a quick study of a, of the half tone, but you will see it and you can start adding other little, you know, pushes and marks here, light petals. That's just going to add more interest and stuff to your rows here. Um, let's get that. So right in this area, I like both reds together. Here I go more violet, both of them together, reds, the uh, naphthol red light, the nice warm color right in there. Let's push some of that right in there. I just like the colors in here. And maybe a, like an extra, now I'll add a little petal sometimes like that. I wiped a little too hard, so I get to put it back in there. Now if I lose too much of that shadow, I just go right back over here to that shadow, and you drop that shadow back in and touch that around. And little movements like this just start to add so much. You know, maybe I'll come back down here with a little more warm and some light and redirect some of this petal here. And this is where I start to say, okay, what's going to be pretty on the rows? And sometimes I'll start adding petals that aren't on the original one just because I think it's going to be pretty. And so I start to add a little bit more, a little more working, a little more edges, usually with just the edge of the brush. And I'll start adding a little bit of water. So this is pure acrylic. And see, even when I do that acrylic and I work these half tones like this, this rose looks like an oil painted rose, right? It's got all this beautiful, this beautiful color. Now, I want to put in, I, one of the things I do is I like to have what I call the spots of color. So nice bright colors. And I like to kind of spot them into the rose. 
after I paint, especially after I paint an acrylic one. So I'll do like this. So this is both, this is my naphtha red light and my quinacridone. And I kind of spot them together here. I'll go a little heavier to the quinacridone when I come over here to the cool side. So what that does is see it puts in this little extra colors into the rose on that side, which makes it kind of pretty here. Maybe uh, reset this light color right here. Draw that out. Just draw that edge here. Let's go to a half tone. So I was there. Let's go to a half tone of our spot color where I was, and we'll just pull that right on the edge. Maybe add a little bit more to that there. And see, I get this beautiful movement. I'll push there, and I get that beautiful movement to that rose on that side there. See, all kinds of ways to do it. And you know, you will we'll all we all have different pressures we use with our hands. We all have different, you know, kinds of things with that we do, and that will uh, kind of set up your technique or how you are going to be painting the roses. So I'll come back with a little more spots of light color here. I'm going to add a petal right in. See, I added that one in. Maybe add another smaller one right in there, or the idea of it right in there like that. Just adds just a touch more right in there. And uh, take just a bit of that out. So you can use the light color now to draw. There's a beautiful kind of a reddish petal up underneath that one there and you actually pick up right up underneath here some of that real light color that's that's there and I might of course we're we're practicing so we're run probably up for our, a good practice running out of time but see I can come back and and just add some more light in there and make a real you know make a real pretty kind of uh, you know changing of this let's round this up a bit more right up into that edge there like that and draw that back down and in it just makes a pretty nice change let's put a there's that flying <laughs> yes. yeah he oh you want to get out of the cold too so let's put this a little bit of orange right down in there yeah some of you that know that you know I, I watch my channels look at that orange in there doesn't that just glow real nice and see I didn't blend anything guys it's because I'm using the values and those tones very close together. That's that half tone, and it makes it look like you blend and you didn't. But anyway, but that this my dogs this summer had figured out how to open the side door of the gallery here, and so they go outside when they want to go outside, but they haven't learned how to shut it. So then a fly comes in. So yeah, there's probably the door's probably open because the dogs are probably outside. So. So anyway, I'll put that on there. So now you see, see all those beautiful, you know, it's not exactly the same because I freehanded that, you know, on there. But, you know, you can get the idea. And there's like little smaller little tones, little drawing tones. You know, I can put those in using just a little corner of this if I wanted to change up this petal here a bit and get a little closer to that one. But I, you just don't need to. This is a practice, right? You don't need to. And... For those of you who haven't watched yet, okay, I did that yellow rose step-by-step -step painting of the yellow Oloprema rose. So I did this kind of thing, but with wet, okay? Watch that. And in that video, I show you I take the pattern off with clear acetate, clear, clear plastic, three mil clear plastic that I get from Dick Blick. Take it off and transfer it. So you beginners... This is a good thing for you beginners. You take this rose, what you do is you take that acetate and you take off each petal, you put the petal on, and then you practice your values and your half tones like this. And you can come back, like I'm gonna come back and add just a little bit more light right to the edge right there. Bring this petal up. See how you can, and you can do that, see? And then if I wanted to soften that even more, I can pull it, or I can just drop down, just drop a little bit of a half tone into it and soften it out. And I can use this little edge. This is what this little filbert is great for. I could use this little filbert edge like this and just draw that little petal down like that. Okay, that's what it's that's what it it's really, really good at for drawing stuff like that. Okay. So now 
let's just uh, let's just take some water, some of our leftover. See, I can take all this with water, even though it's dry, and just kind of push this up a bit here. Let's just drop in. What makes a rose? It's the bowl of the rose, the reaching petals. So we'll give the idea here of a bowl, some of the shadow of the rose here. Okay, let's lighten up a little warmer here and just give the impression of the roundness to it. Maybe a bit of the red here into the center here. We'll give a real quick impression. I love the quick impression ghost roses. <laughs> I call these ghosts. And all I do, guys, is I look for the three parts. The one, the bowl, the two, and the reaching petals. Three. So I, and that's all I'm doing is I'm pushing the, the warm, cool colors here, warmer up into the, the front of the rose that's coming at you like this real quick. So this is how fast I really like to paint the roses. But it's hard to practice going that fast. And what you need to do more than anything else now is practice, right? That's what we do is practice. So you have lots, there's lots of different videos on the channel that I show all different kinds of ways to paint. Here's a pure acrylic way, and it does a pretty darn good job, you know, of painting the rose and stuff here. Let's just turn this real quick so I quit hitting it with that, the uh, bowl of water there and just drop some warm color in here real fast right up into the front there's that little fly guy boy tang and we'll just pull a little petal like that we'll kind of leave that one you could put a little darker center if you wanted to pull it in there and then uh, let's just take a little green we'll drop the green right into our our pinks here which will soften it maybe a bit of our yellows in there and uh, we'll put a little soft gray, a couple of leaves here, rose leaves here. I like that. Those are too much dissimilar, but so you just take them out a bit. Man, I love to paint. It's just, and just create like this. It's just a lot of fun. We'll drop a bit. Let's go slightly darker on those leaves here. So we'll put a softer. And then we'll we'll lighten up after that. We'll start a little bit darker. Start a little bit darker because it looked a little too cloudy. So it means I was going a little too light, too fast. That kind of stuff comes to you through the study of color theory. And you'll know exactly why your color is off if you study color theory. So we'll push some of that in. Now well, let's just lighten that up. Go more of a brighter yellow green. We'll do this. Kind of pretty, put a little, so I put, I put the Hansa in to brighten it, but uh, the yellow oxide will lighten it a little bit, but tone it a bit, because I don't want to go too bright. And then we'll dump this in one side of those leaves here. Here like that, just a the idea of some of those. And you can just paint some fun little movements and stuff out here, greens and stuff just give some ideas and again you know one of the things I tell you about a lot of times is I like to take just the color especially from my main object and just push into the background or push in here you know just to add a little bit of that extra color back out in there which uh, I like and sometimes I'll take a color that's unrelated to it and add it in because I like the color the spark of that uh, particular color or here some burnt sienna and that and just add that in I like the I like the impressionism of that you can add some of that burnt sienna right into that rose here too like take a back petal and add a little burnt sienna right into it that's a pretty color and that would work in there as well all different kinds of ways if I want this rose to look even lighter and more contrast I can even get my reds, my greens really cool by a bit of the, the uh, red violet. This will make it a lot darker and a lot cooler color for the shadow right around that center of that rose there. Maybe right in here by the, the leaf vein. And sometimes I'll just go ahead and put a leaf vein out with that. A little bit of shadow here. Or you can work it back and forth a bit. Push. 
You can work a half tone to soften those leaves, all kinds of fun things. You know, but the leaves, I usually like to stay very understated with the leaves. Um, and uh, so that, you know, the rose stays up here as the, the focal object of the painting here. The leaves are there just as a, as a, uh, you know, a suggestion of something, you know. So there you go. Took almost an hour, not quite. And, uh, but it's a good practice for you. Still get it in during your lunchtime, <laughs> you know, get a little bit of the greens here going through. And all of that, you know, that this looks, you know, even that would make a nice, you know, drop that into a little frame here that'll make a nice painting, nice little rose painting, you know, like that, that'll sit up and uh, look pretty nice. I mean, there's all different kinds of ways we're gonna have fun with all of this stuff. So that's the half tone, okay? That's the acrylic, uh, half tone and so using acrylic also using that water now not all acrylics do this you have to test your acrylic the acrylic that you're using I, you know the heritage is designed to do that so I can do that the heritage is also designed to do as a watercolor too so you know we can use a lot of those water techniques with it but rather you know with a lot of the lessons that I show you here on the channel I show you how to paint with the acrylics like an oil and slow them all down but my favorite way to paint with them is to paint with them as a pure acrylic. Yes, I have all these other things. And if there's an area I get frustrated with a little bit or something or I want, I'm not sure what I want to do and I want to manipulate that color a little longer, then I add a little bit of extender to it. But most of the time, I'm a tone painter. I paint tones. Even when I do portraits and stuff like that, I'm a tone painter. I paint tones. I do very little blending. Of the of the colors, I'd rather make that half tone and soften in on both sides, and it works, guys. It works, but you have to teach your eye how to see your color. Painting becomes better and easier if you can paint with the tone. The danger is the second that we start to add any kind of light to anything like that, it will um, instantly become white. The whole thing will become white. So very little white. So when you look at this. This painting here, okay, I'm gonna put white on my brush. Do you see white in this painting at all? There's none. So be very careful. The lightest colors we have is some of our value nines, and which is what we see on the photo back there, right? We see those value nines back there on the photo. So you can add a little bit more, not too bad for a, a little, a, a, you know, quick practice of a freehand rose. More than anything else, you're practicing the half tone. Practice the half tone, practice sliding your finger to soften it out, practice moving in and out, okay? Draw those three circles, and you guys got it, okay? So there's another little quick brush up for you, and uh, we'll do a heck of a lot more. We gotta, we still gotta do our animals and all that kind of stuff, but I thought I'd show you on some of these flowers and stuff, some real quick ways. So when, oh, just one second here. This is one that I painted here with the oils and of course I, I put more more tones into it not oils but painted it with the um, extender in the uh, ala prima and this is the way I like it but you can see you could do this very easy just pure acrylic with something like this you know um, because you can get those tones and get that movement and stuff but you could actually make it more <laughs> looking more blended you know with this other way. So it's just it's just a heck of a lot of fun. Don't get frustrated with acrylics because they're drying. Because there's techniques that we do that we work with that drying of the acrylic because that's what they're made to do. Acrylics are made to dry. So you need to find those techniques that work with it. And the half tone is the technique, okay? So those of you that are in our memberships, I'll put the photos, the final photo of this one up. I'll put the reference photo up for you into the community tab. Check that community tab, okay? And then we have another live class coming up next week. So make sure you keep your eye on that for all, the, for all my members. Make sure you keep your eye on that community tab. We'll do the live class. And those of you that are in on my uh, online portrait class, we have a, a live portrait coming up in two days. So may, watch your emails and stuff, and we'll let you know about the live painting. And we're doing it Wednesday evening. Yeah, Wednesday evening, we're doing a lot. I'm doing a live portrait of a girl, a young lady, with you on the uh, on the portraits. Okay. All right. I'll see you guys uh, later. Don't forget to check out the video description for some of the links, and I'll see you in a couple of days on the next brush ups. Okay. Okay.